Few free software programs have the kind of reach that GIMP does. Even if you've never used Linux, there's a good chance that you have used GIMP to complete some image editing tasks. And most of the time, GIMP gets the job done, which is a big deal considering that if you really need more, you're probably gonna have to buy Photoshop and then enter into the treachery of an Adobe subscription or pirate an old copy of Photoshop that's likely riddled with malware. Not to mention that Photoshop doesn't even work natively on Linux. Well, this week, GIMP 3.0 finally had its stable release after seven years of development. And the first major change, as you can see, is to the user interface. This is the new welcome splash screen for GIMP, which is really, really nice. But the overall user interface changes are mostly credited to it being ported to GTK3, which required a lot of code changes, but it does bring with it a lot of cool new features like theme customization with CSS. So that basically gives you limitless options for changing the looks of the GIMP app in a way that's also easy to share with others. So we're probably gonna start seeing dot files for GIMP on Unix porn and other places, either as a standalone customization or as part of a larger theme. GIMP also has native Wayland support now. So that's another major app that you're not gonna have to fuss with compatibility layers on on the modern Linux desktop. Now beyond the purely visual changes, the GTK3 update has also brought with it better scaling for people that are using high DPI screens, which is a pretty common setup for people that do graphics work professionally or even semi-professionally because the price per pixel for almost every kind of display has dropped dramatically over the years. Even most smartphones have 4K displays now. So if you're working with print projects where you need something like 300 DPI or more, GIMP is going to look much better on your fancy retina display. And this is something that I first tried out a couple of months ago in GIMP 2.10, but in GIMP 3, tablet support is supposed to be much better. So just like with the high DPI monitors, the casual GIMP users might not care about this too much because they're probably just drawing with the mouse. But if you really want fine detail in your artwork, you're going to want to get yourself a tablet and a smart stylus to draw with. Now, I haven't used one of the so-called professional tablets that Wacom and the like make, but I have connected my Samsung tablet to my Linux computer through a program called Wellis that lets you use the stylus on the tablet to draw in GIMP or make really any kind of input action in any application that's running on your Linux box. So definitely try this out if you have an iPad or an Android tablet already and you want to try out stylus input in GIMP. Now, another big change to the inner workings is in GIMP's color space management. They've laid out the groundwork for CMYK and lab color modes, which is a big deal for printed works because printers handle color very differently than monitors do. You've probably experienced this firsthand if you ever printed out a picture and then you held it up next to the same image on your screen and said to yourself, wow, these look so different. Now imagine you're working on a big expensive printing project with an imminent deadline like so many professional graphic designers do and you quickly start to see why the professional world has been coughing up money for Photoshop instead of just using GIMP all these years. And if you are a GIMP user that's working on a graphics design team, you'll be happy to hear that GIMP 3 has much better support for PSD files, as well as newer image formats like QOI and JPEG XL. So hopefully the people who are happy with GIMP's functionality and have been making do with it all these years won't have to get bullied into using Photoshop as much anymore just because their colleagues need to use it. Now, even though I wouldn't consider myself a graphic designer, I still use GIMP almost daily, mostly for web stuff and occasionally for prints like my t-shirts that I sell on base.win. So I just wanted to show you guys some of my personal favorite changes in GIMP 3. And if you want to read all of the release notes, I'm going to leave a link to that in this video's description. So one thing that always bugged me, and I guess enough other people, enough for the GIMP developers to finally change it, was how layers acted whenever you pasted them into GIMP. So let's say I have this layer here of the Sneed brothers that are dabbing or doing this pose or whatever, and let's say I want to move Chuck closer over here, or maybe I want to flip it around so that they're facing one another. Okay, so the first thing I would do 
is select Chuck, the selection tool, and then control X to cut them out, and then control V to try to paste them to a new layer. But we don't really get a new layer. We get kind of this uh, floating, you know, not really a layer, but kind of sort of a layer thing. And you can adjust it. Uh, so let's say that I wanna just drag them closer together. Maybe we'll do it like this for now. And then if I click anywhere, you kind of get a hint of what's gonna happen with the little anchor icon. It then gets anchored, but it's back down onto that original layer. So then if I make a whole bunch of changes, I mean, let's say that this is a project I'm working on for days or weeks, and then I say, hang on a second. I think I want to adjust Chuck. I think I actually did want to make it so that he is facing his brother. Well, eh, they're on the same layer now, okay? Can't really do that, can't cut him out because then that's gonna remove his hat, and uh, yeah. I just have to re-import that original picture and make adjustments to it. Um, now you can get around this by just right-clicking on this floating layer and doing two new layer, but that's kind of an additional step that uh, maybe you don't want to do. So now in the new GIMP, it basically just does that stuff for you. I'll select Chuck here, cut him out, paste him, and then you see it created a new layer called pasted layer. So now I can drag him over here and you see there are two separate layers. So if I wanna do an adjustment later on in my project, I can just you know move him wherever I want and I don't have to go through a whole lot of headache. Now, another big layer change is how linking works. So let me go back into my Ubuntu VM on my old version of GIMP. Okay, so let's say uh, that I want to move these two layers together, right? So like, let's say that they're together like this, and then I want to move them up, but I want them to be, you know, equidistant apart and still lined up, or I guess they're not really lined up. Maybe they're lined up a little bit better now. Uh, so way that you would have to do that in the old version of GIMP is to click these little link icons here. And so now you can see they're linked together. Um, but this can get tricky if you've got a more complicated project going on, because there's not separate links uh, here. So like, let's say you've got multiple items that are in the background and you've got multiple items that are in the foreground that you want to be linked independently. You're going to have to kind of just manage all of this and make sure that you're not moving things that you don't want to move. But now in the new version of GIMP, uh, things are much more modernized. Like if you want to move multiple layers, you just select those multiple layers, hold down control, select the multiple layers, and then you can hold shift and move them both around. So this mimics the same functionality in pretty much every app now that I think about it. I mean, I'm pretty sure the video editors I've used over the years all work like this. Uh, of course, file management programs all work like this. So it's much more straightforward. And if you're coming from another image editor or you're just getting into image editing for the first time, this should be a lot less confusing. Uh, now the linking dialog has been replaced with the locking dialog, which was in another area before, uh, where you can go to lock the position and size of a layer, lock the pixels, visibility, or lock the alpha channel. Now, hands down, the best feature, and I think most people are gonna agree with me here, is the non-destructive layer effects. Okay, so let's go back to the old version of GIMP and let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say um, that I want to apply some color effects to this layer. Let's start with uh, the curves, okay? So you can see how this is kind of adjusting it. You know, it gets a lot darker if I go down there. Let's just adjust it a little bit. And then let's say that I want to add some color balance to this layer as well. Okay, and maybe I'll increase uh, the yellow a little bit, or I'll increase the blue rather. And sure, we'll do that. But then let's say, oh, well, actually, I wanna go back now and make an adjustment to the curves. Okay, well, how do I do that? Maybe I'll go up here to uh, color and select curves again, but oh no, it's been reset. And that's because this is a new instance uh, of curves, or this is like an additional curves effect that's being applied here instead of just modifying the first instance of it. So if I wanted to go back and do that, now I have to undo my color balance and then I can go and 
redo the curves effect. So very annoying. I mean, again, you can imagine if you're days or weeks into your project and you wanna go way back and change something, that this is going to get really annoying having to go through all of those undos and redos. Well, in the new version of GIMP, if I add my curves to this layer, a little bit there, and you can see now that this FX icon shows up. And if I click in here, that's where the curves effect is and the layer effects. Okay, so now let's go and add my color balance and blue a little bit. Come back over here. You see I've got my color balance and I've got my curves. Well, maybe I want to see what the color balance looks like without the curves. Well, just uncheck the visibility. Now I can see what that looks like independently and vice versa. I can change the uh, ordering of them if you want curves to uh, go after or before or whatever. And then you can also adjust the original curves effect. Go the other way. Now he's looking real yellow. <laughs> and uh, so on and so forth. And you keep on adding new stuff. Like, why don't we do, um, let's see, enhance and sharp and unsharp mask and maybe give them like kind of a deep ride looking effect <laughs> and then come back into the fx and you can see everything is right here and it can all be adjusted independently uh, you can remove them all and when you're finally ready to apply these changes in a destructive way you just come down here and click on merge all active filters down and then it actually applies these effects now now you should know that if you do end up having a whole bunch of different effects stacked up in here, uh, like why don't I just add the brightness and contrast to and add hue saturation in here as well. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And then, um, you know, you're toggling these all on and off. It can start to slow things down a little bit. Like there's just a little bit of lag here. Um, although I am running on a pretty powerful system, but you should know, like if you're on a laptop or you're on a weaker system and you start going crazy with a lot of layers without merging all of them down, then it's going to really slow down your image editor. And this is the case with all image editing programs to some degree, but GIMP has a lot less GPU acceleration and optimization than Photoshop does. So you might get sluggish sooner, but ultimately, being able to make these adjustments on the fly, individually, without having to uh, deal with redos and undos and all that is just going to save so much time. I mean, even if um, things end up like crashing more often or something like that because of like running out of memory or whatever, still, it's going to save you so much more time than having to go back and, and make these adjustments to it. So get yourself the latest version of GIMP. If you're on Arch Linux or some other bleeding edge distro, it should be in your repositories already. On stable distros, you can probably try it out in a flat pack or something like that. And if you used GIMP a long time ago, but it just wasn't up to your standards, try it out now. Just give it a shot and maybe you'll find yourself no longer wanting to renew your Photoshop subscription. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.wen, where you can buy my awesome merch, which was designed in GIMP, by the way, or accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% discount on your order when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.